Jacinda, thanks very much for that. We've seen the sixth boat in just 72 hours as this boat uh, problem for the government continues. We're going to cross live now to Perth and the Shadow Minister for Justice and Border Protection, Michael Keenan, is standing by. Mr Keenan, thanks for your time. As I say, six boats in just three days. Tony Abbott says all the arrivals should be sent to Nauru and, and Manus for offshore processing, but how would the, the coalition government manage that? You'd need an enormous capacity up to 20,000, possibly even more. Well, the first thing you need to do is stop the rate of arrivals. Uh, that is the absolute heart of this problem, and it always has been. Um, it's an unsustainable rate of arrivals that are coming down at the moment. Uh, and once the government changes, we would obviously need to take the tough but necessary decisions to stop those boats from coming here in the first place. Um, look, you couldn't manage this number of illegal arrivals, so what you'd have to do is stop those boats from coming, and that's what we would tend to do from day one if we have the privilege of forming government. So these people that have been, that have arrived during the, the, the Labor government, would they all be sent for offshore processing? Because if that's the case, you'd have to boost the capacity and it would not only be, I suppose, difficult for Nauru to, to manage and, and PNG, but also to cost billions and billions and billions of dollars, wouldn't it? Well, well clearly that would be very difficult to do and we can't make... Uh, those judgments based on what the future rate of arrivals might be, particularly considering every month we're seeing uh, every month we're seeing an increase uh, in illegal boat arrivals. September was the worst month on record. Then October was even worse than that, and November we've already had seven boats arrive this month. So it's very difficult for us to make these judgments based on what might be happening in uh, in the rate of illegal arrivals next year, uh, and we'll need to make these decisions once we get into government uh, and have a look at the lie of the land then. So potentially some of those or many of the people that have arrived here um, aboard the, 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 the boats that Mr Abbott's calling for to be sent offshore now would actually remain in Australia for processing under a coalition government. Well, as I said, it's very difficult to make those judgments, but we would, from day one, aim to stop those boats from coming. That's why we've got a full suite of policies, including turning the boats back around when it's safe to do so. It's the stopping of illegal boats and the squashing of people smuggling that is the absolute heart of this problem. Uh, and that's what we would aim to address as soon as we got into government. The Minister, Chris Bowen, actually argues that the numbers from Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, that they've actually stabilised st stabilised or reduced since the response to the Houston plan has been um, introduced by the government and that it's Sri Lanka where the problem remains. Does it show that at least this is working in part and once they get the message through to Sri Lankan, the, the, the Sri, uh, Sri Lankan people smugglers, that this will actually potentially work? Look, I saw those comments and I mean that is just completely uh, in la-la land. The rate of illegal boat arrivals is increasing. It has been increasing significantly since they made their announcement to uh, process people offshore in Nauru. Uh, we've had over 6,000 people arrive since that announcement was made in August. So the rate of illegal arrivals is increasing under this government's failed policies. It's certainly not decreasing. Well, but what he says is that the message hasn't got through to uh, those in Sri Lanka at this point. And with 116 Sri Lankan asylum seekers having been returned home, in, I think, since August, there is potential that that message might sink in and that this could work. Well, I would like to see it work, but there's absolutely no evidence that it is at the moment. Uh, I mean, the boat we had today, 110 people uh, arrived uh, at a place where we would normally expect that that wouldn't be Sri Lankan asylum seekers who normally arrive at Cocos Island. Um, so the idea that the government's policies are working is completely and utterly farcical. And this is one area of policy where you cannot hide. It's very easy to see whether your policies are working by the rate of arrivals that are coming down here courtesy of people smugglers. And when you've got seven in the first five days of this month, that shows you the Labor Party's policies are certainly not working. There are enormous contradictions, no doubt, in, in, in the Labor Party policy over recent years, and, and I, you won't get any argument on that. But there are also contradictions in the coalition policy, aren't there? Particularly when you're saying you don't want asylum seekers to be sent to, uh, to Malaysia, for example, but you're happy to have boats turned around back to Sri Lanka, which, again, is not a signatory to the UN Convention on Refugees. 
Well, I've heard this argument and I completely reject it. Um, the idea of intercepting and returning a boat from, wh uh, from where it came from is the same as uh, taking people and returning them to a third country of processing. Uh, they, they are both very separate things. Uh, turning the boats back around uh, is a separate policy from repatriating, uh, from sending people to Sri Lanka, uh, and I reject the comparison. What about the ongoing hunger strike in Nauru? It shows that sending people there is hardly going to be uh, great in comparison to Malaysia, which again, as I say, you don't want to adopt because of the human rights issues. And we look at the hunger strike, upwards of 100 people at least involved in that in Nauru. These asylum seekers pushed to, uh, to take that action. Uh, well, I don't think they've been pushed to take that action. I mean, what, the, the important thing is, I think, is when the Labor Party said that they're going to follow a particular course of action, once they've come under pressure to change policies, they've buckled every time. Uh, and that's why people who are detained on Nauru uh, think that they can put pressure on the Labor Party and get a result. Uh, and it's very important, in this case at least, that they have the resolve to stick to the policy course that they have set. Because we can't have a policy in Australia where self-harming or going on a hunger strike gets you a, a particular result, because clearly that would send a message to everyone within the detention network that this is the way you get the Australian government to act. Uh, and we can't afford to have that happen. But when I say pushed to take that action, I mean pushed by the circumstances to take that action. How is that not the case? Uh, well, Australia is, well, we're following a course of policy that we have, a, that, that the government has announced well in advance. Uh, look, I reject the idea that our policies are pushing people to do anything. We are trying to, uh, well, we are trying to, as a parliament, pursue policies that protect Australia's borders. Uh, unfortunately, the Labor Party are not doing it particularly well. Uh, but as I said, what they cannot afford to do is buckle to this sort of pressure, because that's going to send the message that this is the way you get the result that you want, uh, and that would be a terrible thing. Michael Keenan, I appreciate your time today. Thanks for that. Good to talk to you.